everybody. How are you? It's been a little while, hasn't it? Well, that's because Chantal's been very, very quiet. You know, I will confess that at first I did not know if she was still in Kuwait and just trying to make everybody think that she had left, but then she would pop up back on camera in Kuwait again, or if she was really on her way home because everybody's been wondering, is she on her way home? I honestly feel like she is on her way home. And it would make sense because if she wants that holiday AdSense money, she needs to come home now because she's got less than three weeks left in this month. So today we're doing kind of a retro react. And I'm going to put different pieces together of different videos that I found on YouTube uh, to showcase about who she is. And if you are a VIB, if you are a subscriber to Chantal, what you have to look forward to because remember goodness there, there's just a fly that <laughs> the, the flies are far too friendly here in oregon i swear anyway so what was i saying <laughs> i hate when they do that i had a train of thought and then it ran away from me <laughs> those of you that are vibs if you're subscribed to chantal if you're someone that you bought a membership to Chantal, and honestly, at this point, I don't know why you have a subscription because uh, she doesn't go live anymore unless she decides to go live in Canada. So this is what you have to look forward to. I'm just giving you like a brief overlay of the person she was before she went to Kuwait for over a year. So, the different videos I'm going to be using are from people like Queen of WTF and Lindsay with an A. Just give you, giving you, though, those of you that do not know about Chantal, just giving you a brief idea of what you're in for. Now, Chantal is probably back in Canada right now, and she said she was taking a break. If you want my opinion about why she's taking a break, it's because she wants to party in private and she doesn't want anyone to know. And then she's gonna come on camera and act like nothing happened. Although if she has gone back to her old habits, we're gonna find out. She won't be able to keep it to herself for very long. So before we get into the different video pieces that I found to illustrate who she is and who she was, let's start with some of the things that I found on Twitter. Cause you guys know I like to cruise Twitter and look for little interesting tidbits from people. Okay, this is from 4F Beauty and Lifestyle saying, we all know despite her protestations, she watches Twitter. Of course she does. I hope she sees this and goes to the doctor. She's but mentioned tooth pain or I have thought abscess, but to be that swollen on one side would only scare me. Please see a doctor ASAP about this. You know, a lot of people have speculated it might be a tooth abscess. Uh, anybody out there that's ever had a tooth problem, you know how painful that is. I mean, that's the kind of pain that'll stop you in your tracks. But Chantal's come on camera eating just fine. So I don't think it's an abscess. Other people have speculated it might point to a heart problem. But if it is a heart problem, the only person that would know how bad it is, is a doctor. So Chantal's got to be the one to care enough to go to a doctor and get that treated. If she doesn't care, then nothing will change. But here is uh, here's like her regular face. Then there's uh, another shot. Then the original. One side is definitely swollen. The other. Other people are speculating it's just because she wraps one side of her face more so than the other to disguise how big it's getting. So next one is from Lori Alderman saying, is Chantal headed back home already? I can imagine this is what Salah looked like driving her to the airport. <laughs> yeah, the last time Chantal had to come home, Salah dropped her off at the airport. It was at six or eight hours ahead of time. Knowing Salah, knowing how her health is, he probably dropped her off at the airport 12 hours ahead of time just to make sure she got on the plane. <laughs> but you had to know as soon as he dropped her off, he was partying. You know, like he was feeling free and going to let go in the red room. Uh, Misty says, foodie beauty, when you come to Canada, just remember these words. You will be that wife in another country. And maybe Salad doesn't tell her about his cash cow. <laughs> Mrs. Flupa Booty says, OMG, yes, thank you. 
Can we all tweet this like every day for a month after her hooves touch Canada soil? Uh, so here is the clip. Let's watch this. Anyway, hush up, Chantal. I'm not ready for you yet. You'll, you'll get your turn. Okay, so this is an old clip of Chantal. And for context, for those who may need the context, Chantal was seeing a married man whose wife was in another country. And she was trying to justify it and make it seem okay by saying, since the wife is in another country, it's perfectly fine to be with him, which I don't agree. But let's watch the clip anyway. Anyways, he's, he's married and has children in Turkey anyways. But he's not going to see his family for like three years. That's really sad. What? He doesn't do his wife, so. <laughs> no, I, he, he said it was normal. He's allowed to sleep or sleep around when he's in another, I don't know. Yeah. Tara, his wife and kids are in another country. It doesn't count. Keep those words in mind, Chantal. Keep them in mind for you and Salah. You guys are supposed to be married, although we all know that's not a real marriage. The two of you really did not get married, but still you guys are cosplaying as a married couple. You're in Canada now. He's back in Kuwait. So I guess since he is in Kuwait and you're not, if he decides to go to the Red Room, you have nothing to say, do you? No. Well, I didn't know he was married. <laughs> Yeah, but now you do. So, you know, it's one thing to not know about it. But then after you find out, then what do you do? Once you figure out the person that you're seeing is a married man, you can either continue to see them knowing that that property is bought and paid for and you'll never own it. Or B, you walk away because what you want, you will never get out of that individual because they're already spoken for. But like, I mean, it's just his wife in the other country. It's not the same. It's a, like a, an arranged marriage. They don't love each other. What? Well, wouldn't this be an arranged marriage between the two of you? I mean, it was a bit of an arrangement, was it not? This was an arrangement. This was a agreement between two people. You pretend to be my husband. You're nice to me on camera. I'll give you money. I'll buy you some nice things. And uh, I get the benefit of pretending to be a part, ha to have a partner, even though I really don't have one. <laughs> it was an arrangement. So uh, I guess the arrangement is over because if you're coming back to Canada to care for your health, foodie, that's going to take a while. Why do I have a feeling, y'all, that this whole thing with her and Salah, this arc is coming to a close and we're about to start another one where... She's home now. I've got I've, I've I've already got it laid out. She's back home in Canada. She's going to go wild with the party favors or just her behavior in general. Salah is not going to be happy about it and they're going to break apart and she's going to cry and then she's going to rage all over Salah and that's going to be the new arc. She's going to rage, she's going to lose control and she's going to use the excuse of I'm heartbroken. That's why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. So that makes it okay. Yeah, I think we're about to go there. So anybody out there, any audience member, any reactor, anybody that was around for the whole Natter Chantal arc, my best advice to you is get the sleep while you can, because things are about to get crazy. And I mean crazy. You might want to go to Costco, stock up on that microwave popcorn, get those snacks, because Miss Mama's got less than three weeks to make money on YouTube before that extra holiday money goes away. So I predict a lot of live streams, a lot of them, and it's going to get nuts. <laughs> get your rest while you can. Stock up on your coffee, stock up on your tea stock up on your snacks enjoy your rest because it's about to kick off again <laughs> you hussy why isn't he a hussy you're both hussies <laughs> he's allowed to have multiple wives <laughs> oh, my God, coming. well the way he explained it like he's he's not going to see his family for he's not like in a loving relationship with his wife
and you were in one with Salah. There was no love to be found there. It was just him coming on camera and throwing that silent shade whenever he could manage. <laughs> and we were living for it, by the way. We are absolutely living for it. Okay, so let's go back over here. Okay, and I love this from Failure to Lunch. Y'all look at this picture. Look at this. So Foodie Beauty, she listed her country as Kuwait. Then she changed it back to Canada. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, I think she's on her way home. What do you guys think? I think she's actually at, I think she's in Canada right now. She's just hiding. You know, maybe she has a little bit of jet lag. Maybe she wants to party off camera or figure out a place to live because I'm sure the family does not want to take her in. She probably got off the plane and they met up with her and said, dang, you got big. <laughs> but, you know, beyond the size, beyond the size, she's got a nasty personality and she's a lot to deal with. And I'm sure the family does just they, they don't want to deal with it. So they're probably going to tell her to go to a motel. Uh, Perfectly Imperfect says, oops, so sorry. Perfectly Imperfect says, I'm never going back to Canada. This aged well. Yeah, let's watch this again. I'm not going to Canada. So get that out of your heads. <laughs> like if you're waiting for that, you're going to be waiting forever. Well, forever is here, I guess. Because <laughs> you're back. You are back in Canada. Girl, you're back. Listen, I knew you were going to come back to Canada at some point. You couldn't stay in Kuwait forever. You were on a tourist visa. How many times could you renew that sucker before they caught on to you? You know, as I understand it with the tourist visa uh, to keep things going like that, you have to pass a health exam and you would never pass. So you had to come home. You just had to. You can't hang out and hide out in another country. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> in, your cho in your case, you have to come home because you got nowhere else to go. Okay, next. Let's see. Oh, this is great from Great Grebo. Great Grebo made a bingo card for Chantal. <laughs> New Year, New Me bingo card. I love this. Uh, admits marriage is fake. Sleeps with Natter with proof. Fully abandons Islam. Live streams while jet lagged. Infection with impending amputation. Takes FFG to court. Smack talk Salah's family and friends. Live streams without the hijab. Fake breakup with Salah for views. Sleeping on Shmi's couch. Oh, if she sleeps on Shmi's couch, that couch is done for. Deny green peen by Natter rage stream actually loses weight is a hypocrite free or lies <laughs> accepts responsibility for behavior streaming while driving high AF flashing on a live stream surprise Pete is my roommate again claims she cured her betas denied free health care in leafland CRA garnishes wages shows proof of having a Canadian GP Starbies. Salah dumps her I'm a victim live stream. Another blank arc shows up on Dee Dee's doorstep. Hmm. Well, that'll be an interesting bingo card. I wonder how many of those spaces are going to get filled up and how long it's going to take. But that was great, Great Grebo. Thank you for that. Uh, after I posted my last video showing Chantal's little ragey community post, she posted another one. And this one has to do with FFG, going after FFG, talking about alleged uh, back rent. Chantal, you're trying so hard to hurt Frenchie. When are you going to understand that it's not a matter of winning or losing? You've already lost. Now it's just a matter of how much do you want to lose? How big of a fool do you want to seem to everybody? I mean, you're already gigantic. But how big of a fool do you want to be in front of people and how many times? But this is the post. And she went on to show different information, talking about alleged back rent from, from French Fried Girl. Like, look, 
I'm not one to speak on somebody's personal business. It's not my business, but I'm just addressing this post. Sometimes you get behind in rent. And I'm sure if there were financial situations from then, Frenchie is taking care of it now. She's doing quite well. So I don't see the sense of Chantal bringing this up when she herself has had two bankruptcies on her record and she's coming back with one still owed that I don't know if she's paid anything on it or she's going to pay stuff on it. She ran from Canada to keep from paying it, but this is just low. This is just low, Chantal. Absolutely low. You're posting all this stuff. Okay, so that's it for all of this stuff on Twitter now that we're caught up. And there's a reason why I showed that first because some of the videos I'm going to be showing you guys have Chantal and her. Uh, <laughs> Chantal, she's got a dirty mouth. Okay, she's got that profanity. And, you know, if YouTube monetization, you got to keep the profanity out within a certain period of time or they'll smack you. Even though you're not the one doing the profanity, they'll, they'll basically smack you anyway. So... How about we come over here? Let's see which I got like three videos. I'm trying to get up here. Let's let's go to Chantal of the more distant past. And this is from Queen of WTF. Let's start there. Let's absolutely start there. Pay attention. Anybody from Chantal's side, pay attention. This this is the Chantal that all of us who react to her ha, that we came to know. This was during the Natter era, before the hijab, before the abaya. This was Chantal. So anybody who thinks that the reactors are bullies that we're picking on her, you're gonna see. You're gonna see why <laughs> we feel the way that we feel about this woman. And I will leave a link for Queen of WTF's video in the description for anybody who wants to check out the channel or uh give her a like or a sub I certainly uh encourage that so let's get to let's get to hi everybody i don't know what to do with only fans i'm just gonna do silly shit i guess did you see me freaking out trying to get out of the fucking bathtub did you do your taxes yeah so as far as her getting out of the bathtub she's referring to her only fans content she did some only fans content where she was getting naked out of a bathtub pretty much they're being filed tomorrow you guys have seen my boobs it's just saggy tits who cares i didn't cancel hello fresh yet i cannot yeah she had a hello fresh subscription that went on for months and months and months and she never canceled it so food was being delivered to the house and it just rotted in the fridge just all that wasted food all that wasted money not adults for the life of me like i can't Oh, come on. Come on. Damn it. I hate this shit. So I use my new PAX machine. It's a vape machine, so I'll show you how to use it after. But you just basically sip it. You don't rip it. Okay, I don't know what to do about my car. Dang, I just saw your boobies on OnlyFans. Wow. Hey, Purple Mermaid. They're pretty psyche, eh? It's here, Antonio de la Paz. At the airport, on my way to Germany. Have fun. Bring me with you. I can go check out some hot German guys. Yeah, I'm getting my food. Oh, okay. I want, I want a yogurt. Uh, yogurt that's in the fridge, and a, the container of raspberries, and, and a spoon. Thank you. Okay, that's a shot. <laughs> I didn't mean to freeze it there, but okay, I'll take that. <laughs> Chantal, I can tell you are not wearing your underwear, girl. Put some underwear on. It could be plastic. If you had underwear on, then we wouldn't see what we just saw in the back. <laughs> There's a reason why I'm showing this, though. This isn't just a retro react. This is to give anybody on Chantal's side of the fence, like this is who she was before she left. And understand that Chantal has many different issues, many different addictions. She's received treatment or rehab for none of them. And because she's not in recovery for anything, she's not been inpatient for anything, that means they are all still active. So before Kuwait, this was Chantal's life, sitting in her bedroom or sitting in her living room, 
live streaming literally all day, six to 10 hours a day, living in filth, walking around in filth, making her pets walk around in filth. You know, it just, th this was her life. This is what she wanted to do. This, she was living this way completely by choice. And since she's coming home from Canada, I'm in Canada, excuse me. Since she's coming home from Kuwait, uh, more than likely wherever she lands, we're going to see a repeat of this situation again. And she's going to make every excuse in the world why she lives this way. Hi. Did you see my funny looking butt? <laughs> Okay, Lambo, are you seriously going to be offended by anything FFG says about your looks? Like, every single person who reacts to videos is fucking ugly. Really? Really? Ma'am? No. There are some beautiful people that are reactors. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, thank you, Pete. You're welcome. I need to clean my room. Look how dirty it is. Oh my god, it's so embarrassing. Uh, I just feel like I don't have enough time to do fuck all. Like my day's done and I like was busy all day. What did I do today? Okay, so that was interesting. See, when Chantal was in Kuwait, she claimed that she lived this way because she was depressed. Like that that was her reason. That was her number one reason because she was depressed. That she got deep into depression and that's why she didn't clean and why things got so bad. But she's showing right here in this video that it's not about depression. It's not about some kind of phobia. It's about, I just, she just didn't feel like doing it. I put a video of me struggling to get out of the tub and I charged 20 bucks for it. <laughs> oh, mental bees, so I gotta get off. Okay, no, I'm gonna like only screen share if it's like not a wiener. I'm eating healthy. I wanna go back to all my bad habits. What do you mean going back? You never left. <laughs> Uh, I want to eat two wheelchairs right now. Two? Again, context. For anybody wondering, what in the world is she talking about? What are wheelchairs? Wheelchairs are very potent edibles. Very potent. Like over a thousand milligrams. When Chantal was in Canada and she started out doing the edible gummies, she started out like two or 300 milligrams. And then she built her tolerance all the way up to being able to do thousands of milligrams and not fall down. Like, just for context, I have a friend. He suffers from constant migraines. And even though he suffers from a constant migraine that never goes away, the most he'll take in a day is 30 milligrams in the morning and then 30 milligrams at night. So 60 milligrams. And here was Chantal that she doesn't suffer from migraines. And she was taking well over 1,000, 2,000 milligrams of gummies a day. That's insane. So oh, you want me to ask the people that come on if I can put them on live stream first and they can come chat with us? I don't know. It's more fun if they're unsuspecting. I saw a YouTube live stream of Omegle yesterday and it was fine. They just asked people before showing them online. Because you don't need to ask people for them to be in your video, right? Like they can, the people who are in your videos can do a privacy complaint, but that's all they can do. The minor shit really pisses me off. So if you don't want to be blocked, better shut up about it because it's stupid. Oh, well, oh, well, they terminate my channel. Then I don't give a fuck up actually. Right okay, now. I'm going to get my thoughts on the whole Omegle thing. I thought that you going to Omegle was creepy, Chantal. It was really creepy. Because Omegle is for younger people, and there you were in that live stream that you're mentioning. You're a 39-year-old woman. You were 38 at the time. And you were sitting there in your lingerie, chatting up very, 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 very young men. That's creepy. Ew. Predatory. Inappropriate. No, honestly. Charlie. Like the person that she tried to copy... When she would go on Omegle and talk to people, it was recorded videos and she did not dress or act inappropriately, although Chantal did. That's why she got in trouble.
Should I have to get my channel? Maybe I should do that to hers. You know what? Tomorrow I'm going to do? Take down fucking her channel. How about that? Who? Bitch. She's so stupid. What are you going to do for a living? <clears throat> Eat my shit, vegan poop, or I'll fucking block you. Also, again, for context, understand, y'all, she's not doing open chat during this particular live stream. This is not open chat. This is VIB chat. Because for a long, long, long time, Chantal, she just wanted the VIBs. She created the paywall that if you wanted to talk to her, you had to be behind that paywall with her versus the other side. <clears throat> so if she's talking down to anybody, it's to people that paid their $5 membership. Not to people that haven't paid the membership. Oh my God, I can't. Like that kind of stupidity just pisses me off. Actually, I think I'm very beautiful, Kit Kat, so eat my shit. And actually, go tell that to the reaction channels who make fun of people's looks all day, every day. And you don't. That? And you don't. Okay, bye, vegan poop. Have a nice flight. You don't, and food. you don't make fun of people's looks? Yes, you do. Bye. Queen of the one day diet. Well, who the fuck does diets? I'm sorry, but Charlie don't look like she's dieting. So go on her ass too. Somebody's stream sniping my fucking stream. I'm getting off. This is bullshit. Why does this person do that every time I go live? Monty. Like what? You can't fucking do your own. You know, once upon a time, Chantal used to be cool with the reaction channels. She understood how it worked. You know, like she does her content. We react to her and she was fine with everybody. She didn't strike anyone. But then when her money started to go down, she blamed the reaction channels and said it was our fault that we were taking money out of her pocket. Well, if that's the case, then why were you cool with us a while ago? No problem when you're making good money, but then when the money started to go down, you changed your mind. It's not our fault if you lose money, Chantal. It's your fault for not providing entertaining comment content to keep people on your channel. They go the reaction channels because we can make your content more interesting. If you don't like that idea, if you don't like the reaction channels getting the views, then step it up a bit and make your content interesting again. Wrong fucking videos? This pisses me off. I'm gonna go copyright strike him. Ugh, I just wanna block Julia. I hate them. Anyone who puts me in a bad mood, I'm just gonna fucking block them. She actually, the fucking bitch actually tweeted YouTube. Are you fucking stupid, Charlie? she thinks i'm not gonna go after her channel like give me a break i never report them ever i never do she's a mess she lied about losing no she doesn't report them chantal likes to use other people's hands to do her dirty work always has been that way always will be that way she likes to pull that wasn't me crap she'll get other people to do things for her she'll come on her live stream she'll come on her videos or in the comments and subtly hint to people to her beezers to report people for her or she'll find people behind the scenes to do the dirty work like natter so that way her channel stays safe and her income doesn't get threatened losing weight lied about working out lied about deleting her channel lied about all kinds of content but she calls you a liar oh really are you telling me the reaction channels are fucking hypocrites gee never thought yes i have a mirror so i know that i'm round coach real Thank you very much. Would I be more acceptable to you if I was fucking rectangular? What? Or look like a twig? What do you want? I'll send a screenshot, Charlie, reporting all the fucking bullying to you, you fucking miserable bitch. You remember the video she did making fun? Let's go look at all her. Let's go on StreamYards and fucking react to Charlie's channel. How about that? Yeah, do it. Do it. Speaking of StreamYards, Chantal fired up StreamYards once because that's one of the programs that a lot of reactors use to do the reactions. Like I'm using StreamYards right now. There's StreamYards, there's Streamlabs, there's OBS, but StreamYards is very simple to use. So she fired up StreamYard. Problem was StreamYard doesn't have filters. So she fired up StreamYards and she saw her real natural face and she freaked out and she left. It took all of 60 seconds. She did not like streaming with her real self. She wants her filtered self on display. That. You want to do that? And then we'll omegle. 
I think damn it, Danny does that too, don't they? They stream snipe my streams. Like, where do you, where do people think that's okay to do? I'm curious. I'm seriously curious. I think people should cut that fucking shit out. And if it's, if it is against terms of service, I guess we'll find out, right? Look at all the cat food on the floor. This is Sam's fat head making a mess all over the floor when he eats. <laughs> I swear to God. You need to lose your attitude. Sometimes I have attitude, Miranda. I need some edibles. I can't do this. I'm so fucking bitchy. I just want to punch something. I lie about everything, Kim. Yes, you need to tonight she had the nattertude. We called it the nattertude. Because she would go over to Natter, she'd party, she would come home, and then she'd have the Nattertude. Uh, Chantal would do the energetic party favors, and she would be streaming literally all day, six to ten hours a day. And then when she wanted to come down from the energy boost, she would use tons of edibles. She would just go overboard with them. And as a result of using the edibles, that would make her go crazy with the food. Like she would sit there and eat and eat and eat for hours on end, like four or five hours straight eating from one thing to the next thing. It was bad. I'm gonna get a fucking life and lay off those shitty filters. Goodbye. I hate the like people like who are like 90 and use like Snapchat filters with like the friggin- Ma'am, you're almost 40 and you're using them. So what are you talking about? Shiny thing to make themselves. I don't know. It just pisses me off and anyways. So fucking bitchy. I just want to bitch right now. Charlie is going to pay for that message to Team YouTube. Don't worry. They're going to get their own message. What happened to that sweet lady from yesterday? She's fucking... I ate her. Oh, my God. These people are fucking delusional. Okay. I make enough money now that I'm sending her a full-length mirror. Next paycheck. Does, does someone have her address? Like, seriously, send me her address. Or her P.O. box. I want her P.O. box. Right now. This was back in the day when Chantal was making money. That ain't the case no more. You know what, Chantal? You said to the universe... You said out loud while you were in Cuba that you hated money. You said, I have so much money and I hate it. And the universe heard you and said, well, since you hate money so much and it's making you so miserable, let's just help you out with that little problem. And they did. So are you happier now? Deflection of what, Agathon? What am I deflecting now? The fact that you think that I was over at Nader sucking his dick for 10 hours straight? What else are you going to accuse me of now? Shell, go ahead. False strike people. Make more enemies and lose your channel. I will, Shell. False strike. I won't be false striking anybody. Don't worry. You mean like Charlie did? It's okay for that bitch to false strike me. Get the fuck out of here, Shell. You're being blocked. You stupid idiot. Remember, these are all VIBs being blocked. Not open chat. VIBs. Those who paid the $5. This is a warning to all VIBs. That you still have your memberships active. This is the person coming back to Canada. This is the person that she's been essentially in a cage for over a year. She's been pent up. And she went to Kuwait with all of her addictions active. And she's coming back with all of them active. And what do you think is going to happen? She's going to lose control. By me saying that, that's not me wishing anything bad upon her. But if she had any kind of sense, the moment she got off that plane, she'd go straight into inpatient because honestly, that's what she needs. But we all know that Chantal will never do that because she cannot go into an inpatient facility and stream and monetize the content for privacy reasons. So she's not going to get the help she needs. All of her addictions are active. She's around all of her temptations. What do you think is going to happen? She needs the money. She's going to get online and she's going to go bananas. And there's nothing that anybody can do. All we can do is just sit back and watch and see it all go down. Thanks. Goodbye. Order snacks. You're cranky. I don't want snacks. I want edible butter. And I want the whole pound right now. Hey, Team YouTube, I'm going to tell. Well, why don't you react to yourself? Because you're a fat law pal too. How about that? React to your fucking self. You have a page on Kiwi Farms. Go for it. Oh, can I block Jake? One in the chat if I block Jake. Jake, send 15 bucks right now or I'm blocking you because if you want to talk shit, it has to be 15 bucks. Did y'all hear that? Like, this was something that she did a lot of to her VIBs. The humiliation, the degradation, talking down to people, embarrassing people in her live chats. 
her videos and her community posts. This is how she treated the people that were her members. This was when she was really on her high horse because she could never fall off. When she felt free to be abusive to people. This is who Chantal is. This is who she'll always be. She's only being nice to people right now because, as I've said before, a friend in need is a friend indeed. So she's in need of money, so she's going to be on her best behavior. But if she were making really good money, then she would be more free with her words. Okay, let's go make edible butter. I don't know how. It's so Chantal bought something to make edible butter, and she bought a bunch of green to make the edible butter. She made a batch once. I guess she did it wrong, and then she never used it again. It's too long. It takes like two hours. I'm just so angry. Beauty meltdown. Why is everything so messy in my house? Like, there's just so many emotions. Like, I can't even deal with them. Like, I hate this shit. Like, nothing was supposed to be this way. For four years that I've been on YouTube, this bitch has been harassing me. Like, I ignore her all the time. She reacts to my fucking video. She's a mean fucking... Reacting to something is not harassing someone. Harassing someone is reaching out to them privately, uh, reaching out to your family, you know, like just going beyond the lines. Nobody has harassed you, Chantal. Reacting is not harassing. You piece of shit. I'll be your obesing and you'll still be reacting to me. Maybe I should have all my beezers at Team YouTube on Twitter about Charlie's channel. Maybe there we go. There we go. See, what did I tell you about her using other people to do her dirty work, turning her beezers into her own personal private army, using them as pawns on her chessboard? You guys go first. You guys do the dirty work. You do the work for me. You take action. I'm not going to strike this person because I know that if I do it, I'm going to get backlash. No, I'm going to have you guys do it. Because then, then she could say, it wasn't me. I'm not responsible. But here she is signaling people to do something in her behalf. You can't do that. That is against terms of service. Maybe that's what I should do. She is a lol cow, Chi Chi. How is she going to have a channel about lol cows when she's the fucking biggest one? Why would I have, why would I have a Charlie supporter as a Beezer? Why? Tiffany. Who do you, what do you care who a Beezer is? They're paying their membership. Oh, I hate that cult behavior. Like, if you're over here, you can't be over there. What do you care, Chantal? What do you care? Like, everybody has the right to be on YouTube and go where they want to go and watch what they want to watch. Everybody has freedom. Nobody owns anybody. But just the, the cult-like thinking of her, of if you're a Beezer, you can't be here, you can't be here, or I'm going to block you. You don't own people, Chantal. You just don't. I'm going to go on Mangle for fucking five hours just to spite Charlie. And I'm going to do it in lingerie. And what? Report me. Do it. Do it. Check yourself. Before you wreck yourself. No sleep, edible, sex, or junk food. Holy fuck, Jen. I need to go back to all my bad habits right now. I want food. I actually don't want food. I want edibles and a cigarette and a Coke with ice. <laughs> and a big fat wiener. <laughs> no. You're nearly 40. So! I'm having a mental breakdown. I need cigarettes. <laughs> but remember she said she doesn't like to smoke she said she doesn't like to smoke and she's criticized people that are reactors for being smokers but here she is saying i want a cigarette hypocrite well, how about i bring the stuff up here to do the butter hold on here we go look at that mess behind her i mean before she comes back and she blocks the view again look at her room look at it disgusting and sloppy Holy fuck. All the weed dropped everywhere. This looks super complicated. Oh my god. Do you guys know how to use this thing? Let's make butter. And the magic butter machine is working. In the background. Oh, I didn't put the weed in. Oh my god. Yes, we are in fact making butter on the windowsill. You guys act like the things I do are strange. Okay, there's another shot of the mess behind her. I'm just going to blow that up. I'm just going to blow that up and just leave it there for a second. All of those are empty boxes. Uh, you can see the, the computer box. I guess it's a monitor. 
in the very back, but all of those are Amazon boxes that could have been broken down and put away. There's nothing in them. And it wasn't like she was moving to go someplace as her reason to keep them there. I mean, that was her life. And I do remember correctly that she, it got so bad that she actually paid people to come and remove all the different box mountains. She paid like several hundred dollars because she didn't want to do it herself. She make it clap, 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 clap. Stop it, Chantal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, why am I acting like I'm five? You want me to go through your videos, Charlie? Hmm. Fucking nerve of this bitch. Can you believe it? She tried to get my channel taken down. And she still is. So you know what? YouTube needs to know about her too. If you're so bothered, don't fucking watch me. Oh, why do you have to watch me? Because no one gives a fuck. Go go drive around and go to an outhouse and see how many people fucking watch you, bitch. She had zero commentary and just sits there like this with her big head floating in the fucking way. People have a right to freedom to live how they want. They have a right to freedom of speech. So That's right. That is right. People have a right to live how they want and they have a right to freedom of speech. That goes for everybody, Chantal, not just you. And I know how much you hate the fact that this is a platform and there is such a thing as fair use and transformative and reactors fall under that. I know how much you hate that. I know you hate it, but just suck it up, buttercup. This is not your company. This is not your website. You don't own anything. You have a page like everybody else has a page. And unlike you, we follow the rules. And as long as nobody breaks the rules, then, you know, nobody's going to lose their channel. So if you have a problem with it, turn the effing channel. What are you trying to do? Censor YouTube, you friggin' moron. By being an asshole reaction channel, you're going to talk censorship? Ugh. And what was I doing wrong? Oh, let me guess. You look like an idiot in front of YouTube because they looked at my video and did nothing about it because there's no breaking terms of service. <laughs> yeah, I did not sh oh, I'm blocking Tribe Called Creek. Goodbye. This is bullshit. I asked a person to show their boobs. You're an idiot. That's where I draw the line. I don't get the part in this wig. It doesn't make any sense. I did cut it, though. Yes, yeah, Chantal brought she bought so many wigs. She spent thousands on wigs and some of them were actually pretty nice, but then she would just get it in her head that she was a hairdresser and she would just chop away at them until they were no good, like she's doing to this one. It's just a cheap ass wig anyway. I look like Emma Stone. Who's that? Oh, that's like, you just look like a bitch, Charlie. You're a little bitch. Oh, I took my thing off. Look, whoa, I'm skinny. Look at this. No, you're not. I love this thing. Where's it been all my life? My ass crack is like pink. There's like, it's colored. I don't know why. Is it because I'm like Ew. stuck together? So I could bleach my ass crack? For real, I'm not kidding. Okay, I'll go and block people. Okay, what are we ordering? I need to glow up, but it's so hard. So now, the, the one thing I remember the most about all the many different six to 10 hour live streams, it was, it was scary and it was incredible to watch Chantal eat because this woman, she's so hyper fixated on food that she would order a bunch of food. And after the order arrived, she would be eating it. At the same time she's eating it, she's talking about food and she's already thinking about her next meal. She would order another meal while eating the first meal. She was like an eating machine. It was crazy. I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna go on the stream yard. So be on the lookout, okay? Bye. Okay, so that was a video from Queen of WTF. I will leave a link for the video in the video description. So thank you, Queen of WTF, for posting that video. And that video was posted, let's see, about a year ago. So we're going to get out of there and go to another one. Because that is the Chantal of the past. So let's go on to another one from Chantal's past. And again, this is all about showing those that don't know what they have to look forward to when she comes back. Because remember, she is someone, she's got issues, she's got untreated addictions that she's not gone to rehab or inpatient for. And that means she's coming back and they're going to rage out of control. So let's watch this clip from Dean Goldberry. Let's watch. What is this shit? Oh my god. 
Oh, she's eating. Can we get past this part? <laughs> I don't want to see her eat. We're going to get past that part. Are you guys going to call that? Uh -huh. What did I leave this as? Yeah, Chantal had two speeds back then. It was either really, really hyper or really, really slow. Like she could barely talk. And that's usually after a lot of edibles. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good night, guys. Toodles. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Because I'm in the middle of doing some things. And I... And... That's right, May. You tell them. I don't know why people are mad at me right now. Victoria, why are people mad? All this time, why are people mad at me? Stop defending her behavior. Like, what behavior? What behavior? What did I do? Right. So there were some streams where Chantal would not be eating. And as Dean is pointing out, there was no food in this entire stream. No gorging, no eating at all. Uh, Coca-Cola kills the appetite. That was the only thing that kept her away from the food. She tried Ozempic. She didn't like the way the Ozempec made her feel. So she started doing the Coca-Cola. And that actually kept her from eating. And she lost weight. And you could honestly tell she lost weight because you could see more of her ears and more of her cheekbones. So she would use the Coca-Cola to give herself energy, but also to keep herself from eating. I believe it was because she wanted to be with Natter and she knew that Natter liked smaller women. So she was trying to lose weight that way. Although that's not a safe way to lose weight. And that's not going to fix the ongoing problem of the bee monster in your head. You may be putting it to sleep for a very short period of time, but you are not curing the problem. And when it wakes up, it's going to be 10 times worse. What? What did I do? I'm still waiting to see what I did. Also on that note, I do remember that in the beginning, I believe it was when she first started talking to Natter or seeing Natter, she also got nosebleeds for a time. Just out of nowhere, like constant nose nosebleeds. And everybody was freaking out, thinking like, what is going on here? I can't say exactly sure about why she was having them, but they happened for a time and then they just stopped. Uh, Amara, I, I just I don't even know what, what the criticism is. I don't know what I did. Because you are dishonest. I'm in a mood. How does that work? <laughs> and for the record, for anybody who was not part of the Chantal story back then, whenever she would do the nose powder, the crash from doing a lot of it was always rages. Like she would rage. She'd be in a nasty mood, and she would take out her nasty mood on everybody. Okay, I'll be back, okay? I have some things I have to do, so I'll be back. But be on the Yeah, but there were many times during these live streams where she would excuse herself to the bathroom to go do the powder. And when people called her out because they could hear her sniffing in the bathroom, she would mute the sound. She would even so be so bold as to do the line right there by the microphone and we could hear her. She would turn the camera away, but we could still hear her. Look out.
Sorry. Okay. What's the matter? I just, I don't know how to say what I'm about to say. Um, I think I know what this is. This is the live stream that she did where she confessed that she had a Coca-Cola problem. And she confessed to her audience that she did around $3,000, $4,000 worth of Coca-Cola. Sticking that up her nose. And then she quickly deleted it, of course. But I don't think it's something, I, it's not something I was going to talk about, but I just feel really, I just feel really alone and I don't know what to do. Honestly, I don't. Like, I, I, not that I don't know what to do, it's just. You know, what she was trying to do was combat one addiction with drugs. But all you do when you do that is you are stacking problems on top of each other. You cannot use something like that to get rid of an eating problem. It just doesn't work. This is why she needs inpatient. Strict, locked down, monitored inpatient. Where she cannot leave. She'll be surrounded by people that will tell her no people that know what they're doing. She needs therapy. She needs all of that stuff. But she'll never go and get those things. She's got multiple issues. She might have mental issues, mental problems that are untreated. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not here to diagnose Chantal. But just things stacked on top of each other, using one thing to escape from another thing, but in the end, you're not escaping from anything. You're just creating more problems on top of problems. I talked to Bibi about it, but nobody else. I like kept it in because I think I'm, I think I'm in like denial. Yeah, so she got deep into the Coca-Cola and she was calling her ex-boyfriend Bibi, who she cheated on. Good man, BB. She cheated on BB. She put him through absolute hell. And although he is an ex and should be left alone, she called BB for reassurance and comfort. And he told her to get on top of this thing and she never did. <laughs> I was trying to go through the day and just like, be normal and, and cook and everything, but I just can't. I just don't want to. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, I need Kleenex. <coughs> I, I haven't even told my <coughs> close internet friends, like all of you are going to be like, what the fuck, you know? But I'm not okay. But, um, oh my God. <coughs> I don't know how to get it. I am so sorry. Say it. I don't know how to say it. Ooh. I'm pretty sure that I'm addicted to cooking. You know, I support anyone who, if you have a problem, if you have an addiction, realizing you have a problem and reaching out for help. I'll forever support anyone 
who they reach that breaking point and they say, I've got issues and they're way over my head and I need help because I can't deal with these things myself. But the most Chantal has ever done is get on camera and talk about things and air out her dirty laundry and never take the steps to actually clean it and fold it and put it away. She came on camera telling her VIBs and everybody that she had a problem with Coca-Cola. But did she ever seek out any kind of rehab or treatment? Did she ever talk to anybody? No. No. She left out that crucial step. So it would seem that she wants the addictions to continue, all of them, because her addictions mean content. Her addictions are topics of conversation. Her being an addict means because she's an addict, people will forever be concerned for her and on edge for her. And she's never going to really heal herself. She doesn't want to because if she healed herself, what would there be to talk about? What would we talk about with Chantal if she took care of her health? If she did not have the issues that she has, what interesting thing would there be about her to discuss in a reaction video? I'm not saying that there aren't interesting things out there to include in with her content, but she's never bothered to find those. It's all about exploiting the negative, scraping together any negative she can find to herself to make her interesting versus finding something positive to make herself interesting. I can't stop shaking. I've been shaking all day. <laughs> you know what she should have done during this live stream and sit to come to her VIBs and say, I have a problem with Coca-Cola. I did this much and I know I have a problem. And after I'm done here, I'm going to get on the phone. I'm going to call somebody. I'm going to call my family and I'm going to rehab. I'm going to go to a treatment center. I'm going to go somewhere. That's how it should have been handled if she cared, but she didn't go that far. Like I said, Oh. Like I, I can't stop shaking and I just feel like I just need to calm down. That's why I ordered the pre-rolls because if I do <clears throat> when I do edibles or I do um, cannabis, it actually really helps with the nerves because my nerves. Right. So her answer to being addicted to drugs is to take other drugs. But see, when you have a problem with food, doing the green is a big, big big mistake especially at the level that she is at with her food problem if you got that meme monster running around in your head knocking things over the last thing you want to do is help it to grow bigger so she would do the white powder to suppress her appetite and keep her from eating and to give her energy to live stream six to ten hours a day every single day Oh my God, it was too much to keep up with. It was crazy. But she would do the white powder all day, all night. And then when she was ready to go to bed, she would do way too much in edibles, like ridiculous amounts, crazy amounts, spending all that money. And then she would have a B moment that lasted for hours. Not a good idea to supercharge the bee monster in your head. Never. Those are just so like... Welcome, Geraldine. Okay, so she admits to being addicted.
and she cries out for help. She's embraced by family, like the music's getting really loud. She does not she does not seek drug treatment, just an ER visit. And so she goes on a blank buying binge. <laughs> so she's just admitted that she spent three to four thousand dollars on the white powder. And her answer to that is to buy a ton of green. That's not going to fix your problem to the white stuff, Chantal. Not at all. Gary. Eating fish. I'm going to go visit Joe and he's going to do edibles with me. <laughs> Joe, zip it. Joe, you're not off to a good start. Christmas Leviathan. Where's all my stuff? I wonder if she was talking about Karate Joe here. I don't know if he was still around at that time. So, I have a whole bunch of uh, items to get me through all this crap I'm going through. Yeah, it wasn't enough that she was doing this stuff herself. She was coming on YouTube and just showing it off proudly. Look what I bought, y'all. Look at all these edibles. Look at all this green. Showing it off to everybody on YouTube. Nobody needs to see that. It's not that kind of platform. She didn't have the good sense and decency to do this stuff off camera where nobody would know. Showing this as content and her videos were not age restricted. Well, uh... Hi, it's you, Jitsu, Trixie, Giggle Life Away. Hi, Raquel, hi. I got your loving emails. Thank you. And a lot, most of you who have been reaching out to me. Some, uh, so she made that video. She was crying. She got everybody concerned for her welfare. And then she comes on and acts like nothing happened. Comes here. Magic mushrooms. And I really so, appreciate You know, she was doing the... <clears throat> button mushrooms as well so button mushrooms green stuff and the white powder appreciate it thank you very much uh, and again i am showing this i'm sorry if there's anybody out there that might be triggered i should have issued a trigger warning earlier so i apologize for that but i'm showing this for a reason i'm showing this so those that don't know that were not around for this era I'm showing you what you have to look forward to. And you can make the decision whether you want to watch her or not, because she left Canada an addict with several addictions. She's coming back to Canada or she is in Canada with those same addictions still active. Still active. Not a single one of them is has been treated. She's not been to rehab for anything. This is the Chantal that pe people will most likely see again. The mushrooms I have, I'm going to try for microdosing. This is my after, after visit summary from the hospital. Um, I didn't sleep for like two days. And then I went to the hospital and then my uncles and uh, I've been so tired. Like just like sleeping and sleeping and sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. Um, I've been is. experiencing is just this like anxiousness that uh, really just smoking a bit or taking. Well, maybe you're experiencing the anxiousness because a you're not sleeping. I'm not diagnosing you, by the way. You might be experiencing the anxiousness because you're doing too much of the white powder. Maybe that's it. In like one gummy will just like help me relax. You know. So that's what I've been doing. Um, now I ordered so many things that this company gave me a free gold, are you guys here? Okay. Hi guys. Um, a gold THC milk chocolate made in Canada. Um, 1000 milligram chocolate bar. So I'm okay. I don't want to show all these different products and so we'll get past that. Uh, so she's buying this stuff and none of this stuff lasted long. She doesn't know how to do a little bit of something. It always has to be a lot of something. Um, anything she does, she does way too much. Unregulated stuff, really? I don't know. Yeah. So this is gonna go in my stash here. I'm gonna light this candle because I'm in my room. I like. I actually really like being in my room with my lights lit. And I know this sounds so bad. I have so much support that it's 
a little overwhelming at times. Like there's times where I've been snappy at my family who's helping me. Like I feel so bad because like a lot of support when you're like not feeling good is overwhelming a little bit. I'm noticing. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So the Dean says, wait, when you were crying over your addiction, you said, I feel so alone. So what Chantal essentially does when she wants attention, she will do whatever it is she has to do to get the attention. She will sound the alarm. She'll set off the warning bells to get people looking at her, to get people talking about her and paying attention to her. She'll get people concerned. And she wants to feel that love, I guess. That's her version of love is attention. But she won't do anything to fix what's wrong with her because she, she wants to use the same tactics over and over and over again to get attention. And if she changed herself, she couldn't use those same things, could she? Like just constantly people who are caring about you and like I just I, I honestly checking. I shut up I don't think it's right to sit there and be that person if you know you have issues if you know that you need help you're not reaching out for help I think it's wrong to be so manipulative so evil that you're going to cause your family and total strangers to always be on edge when it comes to you because you're so out of control. Like at one point do you seize back the control, take care of yourself? At one point does that happen? Because eventually if you do have a crowd of people around you that they start off in a place where they are caring of you and supportive of you and loving you, if you do the same things over and over and over and over again, it is possible to emotionally wear people out they will experience exhaustion mental exhaustion emotional exhaustion they get burnt out on what you're doing and they turn away she likes to burn people down to the nub in the end. <laughs> and I, so, I, love, I, I i ordered so much like if you order a certain amount of stuff you get they gave me this free bar it's a thousand milligram uh, chocolate. i doubt that i doubt they gave you a free bar of anything you just like to act like you're such a great customer. They would give you stuff like that for free. I don't believe that. Put milk chocolate. Pretty cool. So I'll, I'll eat that one day. Um, I did get more packs of the Shatter Bears. And those are really high potent, by the way. That's what she had to upgrade up to. She started off doing her vape pens, then the roll-ups, then the really high potency gummies. And then that became the Shatter Bears. And from what I understand, Shatter Bears are very, 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 very potent. See, I had one. Like her tolerance was just that bad. Already, uh, not today, but yesterday. Hi, ducks. Yeah. I got my Shatter Bears. I'm going to be just having like a lower dose, like probably 60, like maximum kind of thing, you know? Um, not 200 milligrams. Hi, Lindsay. This is just like medication for me right now. It's not. Well, maybe that's because what you're taking is at a lower dose, it's equal to something at a higher dose because the something at a higher dose as is not as potent. Maybe that's why. And you're trying to frame it as I'm not taking as much because you don't have to because you're buying something much more potent. But I don't believe for a moment that you did anything in moderation back then. And I don't believe you're going to do anything in moderation now that you're back in Canada. I have no hope or no faith in that at all. Like, it's not, it's actually not recreational. This is like, I need this right now. The bears are, so one bear is 50. That's scary talk. When somebody who's doing all kinds of chemicals, when they say, I need this right now. It's not a need, it's a want. But if you get to a point where it's a need, that's when you need to seek help. That means you've gone over the edge. You need to seek help. If it comes a need, there's a problem. 50 milligrams. I make a basic teaser. So, all right. So I also have um, this. I love these things. These are the caviar. Uh, I put the like thing in, like for example. Oh, and these. I got some, Marissa. I, yeah, she used to spend so much money at the dispensary. <coughs> Excuse me. Dry throat. 
And this isn't counting the trips to the outhouse. Yeah, for those who don't know, she would make these weird trips to the outhouse. And she would take us with her when she did these trips. She would go to the outhouse. And everybody figured out it was a drop-off point for party favors. But she was always going there. And there was even one occasion where she met somebody at the outhouse. And they did kind of an exchange. But she was very attracted to that outhouse for some reason. These are the best rolling papers. These are raw cones. I don't know if you guys know. Um, if you're, if you're, so if you can't roll. Yeah, these come with like, pre, they're pre-rolled. I don't want to see that. And this thing, you can go like that with the stuff once it's ground up. So, put it in. so here she is being an addict and flaunting her addictions. Talking about them, being almost proud of them. Look what I'm doing, y'all. I've got all this stuff and I'm going to get high flaunting them versus saying there's there's something wrong here and i need to seek help i have i did roll myself some yesterday um five dollars i didn't realize it would be that small but it's really really potent how do you and then i have um 14 grams of oh we don't need to see all of that ma'am youtube hello um oh and then last but certainly not least what i've been sprinkling on my uh joints is something called uh, this is indica and i also have a city. so it's not enough that she's got the green rolled up you know she's got to put more on top of that yeah that's how bad she was <laughs> you know what we've seen enough of this video i don't want to see her show off all of her stuff i don't want to show that on youtube i will leave a link for the full video in the video description if you guys want to check that out and we got one last video that i want to show you guys and this is from Lindsay with an A, because she had some interesting thoughts about foodie, the foodie is coming back. So why don't we just finish it off with that, okay? And I will leave a link for her video also in the description. So let's get to, let's get to, courtesy of that's Lindsay with an A. Some more lazy content for you, but it is what it is. We're going to go back to about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, this was, <laughs> it's over a year, I guess. This was October 5th of 2022. On this day, I was... And why does this fit in with the other two videos? Because the other two videos you just saw, that was Chantal when she was raging. She was out in the open. She wasn't hiding anything. She wasn't cosplaying anything. She wasn't cosplaying being something that she wasn't. She went directly from being like that to I know someone in Kuwait and we're going to get married and I'm moving to Kuwait, blah, blah, blah. She jumped directly from that to this. And so she now she's back in Canada. Everybody's saying she's back in Canada. I believe she is too. But I guarantee you that hijab and the abaya Within a week, she'll take that off. And then you're going to see, everybody's going to see the Chantal that I just showed you. She'll be back full force. But let's get on with Lindsay's video. At the hospital with my husband, and we had just welcomed our third daughter into the Congratulations, world. Lindsay. And that's what my life looked like at that point. I mean, I know we're not supposed to compare our lives to, you know, the women, but... I just, this date just stood out to me in contrast to what she's doing. She's in her car announcing my first hijab. And I I was uh, bringing a baby into the world. I'm going to give my thoughts about Chantal and her arcs and why she switched gears so suddenly. So I watched Chantal just when she was the most feral, when she was the most beastly. When she was flashing us, talking about DVNSA, eating the food, being gross, farting, burping, uh, living filthy. I watched her just, she kept trying to find more and more shocking things to show us and to talk about. And I knew eventually that she would hit the ceiling with all of that. That there would come a point where she would just have nowhere else to go. 
And the big question at the time was, well, when she hits the ceiling, where does she go from there? Well, in Chantal's case, if you shown everybody everything that you can possibly show for drama's sake, for shock, what do you do after that? You have to go the opposite way. And so that's exactly what she did. Instead of showing off all the parts of her body, she did the complete opposite. She covered everything up and she tried to pretend being modest when it takes more than just a hijab and an abaya to be modest, Chantal. But you put the abaya on, you put the hijab, not to be modest, not to change yourself, but to hide yourself away. But what is hidden will always come to the light, won't it? Yeah. You can run, but you can't hide, darling. You're not hiding from anybody. But go ahead, Lindsay. It's just, you know, just a, the, the two different pers uh, perspectives, I guess. So uh, I went back to this video because I'm, I'm looking for something else to make another video on. But I found this. And what she says here next, it's just how far we've come. Okay, here we go. Okay. Chantal, and I'm still Foodie Beauty. And I... That right there. I'm sorry to, to cut you off, Lindsay. I am so sorry. But if you're someone, and if you want to abandon an old life, you want to leave it behind, you're saying to yourself truly in your heart that you led a destructive lifestyle and it was no good. It was toxic for you. Why would you still carry with you something from that life? Even a name. If you want to change your life, you got to change your complete life. It's got to be a complete lifestyle change, an attitude change, a change in the things you do, the things you say, the way you think, the way you move, all of it. So how can you be modest Miriam at the same time on the inside, you're still foodie beauty. Foodie beauty, the persona is destructive, is toxic, is offensive, is vulgar, has addictions that need to be treated. You want a complete different life, then you have to change your entire life. You can't carry part of that old life forward with you. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to really change. I still, as a result of that, am a very eccentric person. I always will be. And I just always need to be moving on and experiencing so many different things in life. The type of life I want to live, I don't think is just inside of four walls. But that's exactly what she's done. She says, I don't want to live my life inside of four walls. What did she do, though? <laughs> what did she do, y'all? She went to Kuwait. Whole different country. Whole different way of life. Had a husband that she said was extremely supportive. Went to a place where she said she felt closer to Allah. And she ended up just keeping herself alone in a room with four walls. So you were alone in Canada with four walls. And then you went to Kuwait and had the same exact situation. You spent all that money and all that time in Kuwait for the same environment. Nothing changed. Except the fact that you went to Kuwait and you became much bigger in size and much more unhealthy. And you're coming back to Canada sicker than when you first started out on your trip. You know, all the time. Okay, maybe. Wow. The life I want to live is not between four mm -hmm. walls. And what do we see her do now? Sitting in front of a camera, eating in four walls. Like... Chantal, you can change the people around mm -hmm. you. You can change where right. you live. You can change the country. I mean, hell, you went to Kuwait. You went to Thailand. Mm -hmm. But the problem at hand is still you. Right. No matter what country you go to, you are the problem. That's because if you've got addictions, you've got issues, 
no matter where in the world you go, they are coming with you. They are problems you don't put in a suitcase. They are problems you have here and here. And the only way to unpack them is through therapy, talking to somebody, someone who's not a beezer, someone who won't listen to your bullshit and agree with you. They'll ask the hard questions to get the answers, to get down to the very root of what's wrong, to help you fix it. That's what therapy's for. That's what treatment is for. Treatment is not supposed to be comfortable. It's not supposed to be easy. The more severe the issue, the more uncomfortable you're going to feel. But there's a reward. For all those moments of being uncomfortable, there's a chance for healing. If you want that chance, then you will deal with the being uncomfortable and the stressed out. You'll fight your way through it so that you can be a better person at the end. But she does not like to be uncomfortable. She hates it. She doesn't like change because change would mean that she would have to abandon all the things that she has become comfortable with things that she makes money off of and to abandon those things would mean that she would have to find a complete different change of life. She would have to change how she does things, how she thinks, how she talks, how she moves, the content on her channel. She'd have to move things around inside of her head and out. She don't want to do that. She likes the way things are. Now, some might argue and say, well, that's not true. She's unhappy. She might be unhappy. But whatever the discomfort is, whatever the pain is, it's not to a degree that she is willing to change it. It is possible to become comfortable with what normally would be uncomfortable for others. We as people, we adapt to environment, to people. And sometimes the uncomfortable becomes our normal. Being uncomfortable is her normal. She can deal with a certain level of it. And as long as it, it doesn't go above that level, she thinks she's fine. She says to herself, I can handle it. Well, when are you gonna wake up Chantal? You're at a point where everything is critical. Your health is critical. And you're coming back to Canada with all of your addictions intact. You reach that fork in the road. Door number one, you say to yourself, I got issues and I can't trust myself and no one else should trust me either. I need to surrender and just go get treatment. Or door number two, you don't give a crap and you end up making yourself worse and then you either end up in the hospital or the morgue and that's not me wishing that upon you i'm just saying that's the unavoidable end if you stay on the path that you're on so really your life or your death is completely up to you and flash forward to today on what is it december 4th of 2023 you are going back to canada mm -hmm. to fix you hopefully all right, let's see what else she has to say before we uh, get out of here. Inside of four walls, but it has to be different four walls all the time. And I just don't know. I, I really wanted to travel and experience different cultures and different life. And there's a lot of values and principles of different cultures that I appreciate. So I just. And see, this is what makes me think that it was never about Salah. No. It was just about getting out of Canada. Yep. I want to say that I'm not sure what is going to be happening. Going Chantal has never been one that she was open to learning. She's never been open to learning new things. It's all about, I want to be in whatever environment that I want to be in, but I want to stay as I am. I don't want to open myself to be a better person. I, she says, I wanted to learn about different cultures and different people. So you were in Kuwait for over a year. What exactly did you learn? 
what exactly did you absorb besides the food? Because I can say without prejudice that I watched all of your live streams and all your videos from Kuwait. Okay. I did not see any kind of personal change in you. I did not see you change in any way positive over there or made better for being around Salah, for being in Kuwait. And it's not Kuwait's fault. Okay. I'm sure it's a lovely country with great people. But you did not get out and experience the life there. You did not learn about the people. You did not respect the culture. You did not behave appropriately for a newly reverted Muslim woman. When you took the Shahada, you were very disrespectful. Even as a newly reverted Muslim woman, you continued to use profanity, to gossip, to be a glutton. You did many things that were haram. And your reasoning was, you can't tell me how to be a good Muslim. You kept moving the goalpost uh, according to your wants and needs versus what you needed to do. So you went over to Kuwait as yourself, as foodie. And you came back as foodie. The person, Chantal, was not improved in any way. And that's why I don't have any hope for you. For you to get any kind of, uh, for you to experience any kind of growth. Honestly, Chantal, you would need a team of people dedicated to your care 24 seven. You would need a team of specialists, doctors, nutritionists, going to rehab, going to recovery, uh, going to recovery programs, going to inpatient. You would need an army of people just dedicated to you. And even then it may not work. Because even if you had an army of people assisting you, the most important piece of the puzzle is you have to want to change. You've got to reach that moment where you wake up and say, I can't go any further. I really can't. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I don't like the person that I am. I want to change. But to be honest with you, I don't think you're sick and tired of being foodie beauty. The person, Chantal Marie, may be sick and tired of being sick and tired. The person, Chantal Marie, may be extremely unhealthy and wanting to change. But you are so absorbed into the online YouTube persona that you can't even see straight. It's all about keeping that persona going. It's all about having a YouTube channel and getting subs and likes and engagement. You're so hyper-focused on social media that you are letting the person behind the persona rot from the inside out. What you need, you will never get because you're not ready. You're definitely not ready. Going forward in the future, <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly where this journey will take me. So far, it's been taking twists and turns and... Honestly, some of them have been very painful and some of them have been really, really hard, hard lessons. But at the end of the day, I think that I can say I'm grateful for the experiences because that's how I learn. Um, I'm You've never learned. You, I would say that you are exactly the same person you were before YouTube, but I didn't know you before YouTube. But I think what happened when you wandered onto YouTube, that you've been a troublemaker and a liar and manipulator and just all out evil before YouTube. And when you got on YouTube, you found a way to make your lies and manipulation and your greed and your gluttony work for you. You profited off of all of those things. For a long, long time, you made a lot of money. And then the money started to go down and your health went down with it. I'm my own worst enemy. Yep. And, but I'm also my own best friend because I know no, you're not. Who told you that? Who told you that you were your own best friend? Who, who put that lie in your head? You are your own best friend. Well, you need to take that. You need to tell that best friend to stop calling you. That best friend is lying to you. What best friend would be okay with you acting the way that you're acting? 
you don't even have real life friends, Chantal, because you treat people like crap. You treat yourself like crap too. You have no self-respect. There's no self-love going on here. The way you behave, you are punishing your body for reasons unknown to me, but you are. Every time you sit down and you do a mukbang or you have a B moment, it's like you're punishing your body. You're, you're, you're self-hating on yourself. I don't know why, but you are. But I learn from my mistakes no, you don't. and I'm learning to love myself. I'm learning to do better for myself. I'm learning to. So gaining 150 pounds over in Kuwait, that's self-love. Was that you learning to love yourself? I don't think so. Not taking care of your health. That doesn't speak of self-love. Just learn that it's okay to not be okay. No, Chantal, you're not learning a damn thing and you haven't done any better. Sure, you might have proved that, you know, you're close to 366 in pounds, but 535. At the end of the day, right now, yes, weight contributes to diabetes, mm -hmm. but you need to work on your diet. Okay, the pounds will come off if you do that. The pounds are a byproduct of the diet. You need to work on your diet. Your sugar numbers are terrifying. Yeah. End of. They are terrifying. Those are numbers that if you had come to a clinic in the United States, they would have admitted you. Okay. Yeah. Had you gone to a clinic in Canada, they probably would have admitted you too. That's not something where it's like, here's a pamphlet, go home, stab your finger a few times and come back in two weeks. That That's not it. Those numbers are not the type of numbers where a doctor looks at you and says, you can have a palm of rice and you can have a palm of chicken and a palm of, no, 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 no. These are admit me numbers, okay? But the scary part is, even if the doctor is admitted, Chantal, and I'm just making up a hypothetical situation here, even if Chantal got admitted into a hospital for really high blood sugar, like dangerous blood sugar, and they treated her, and they got her back down to normal, here's the scary thing. As soon as Chantal got out of the hospital for that treatment, she will go directly to a Burger King or a Starbucks and have a B moment just because she would be thinking to herself, well, my blood sugar is normal now, so I can just go ahead and have a B moment right away. And that blood sugar would go right back up and spike all over again. For someone like Chantal, and this is my opinion, because she's got such a problem with food, diets don't work. Diets are things that you do to lose a few pounds before the holidays, like 10, 20 pounds. Diets are things you're only supposed to do short term, right? Chantal's got a very severe problem with food. She doesn't need a diet. She needs a complete lifestyle change. She needs to go to inpatient for her addictions and for her BED. Like I said, have a team of specialists dedicated to her, but that's not going to happen. But that's what she would need. She's got a lot of issues. She might have mental issues, emotional issues that are untreated that might contribute to her behavior. I don't know. Only she would know. Only a doctor would know. But just her getting admitted to a hospital for high blood sugar, that would not be enough. The doctors can only do so much. They can only treat what's wrong at that moment. But there's not a single doctor or surgeon in the world that can perform any kind of operation that could remove the addiction or the issue or obsession in her head. That's what the therapy is for. And yet she won't go. And so the bee monster will continue to rage inside of her. She will continue to be impulsive. She will continue to go to places and around people and talk to people that promote her addictions. She will continue to surround herself in enablers. In my opinion, I think a big part of her problem, other than the fact that she's a problematic person, is that she's always looking for people to enable her. And I think people around her, her family, people online 
she surrounds herself with those yes men. She's got her little uh, parachute to keep herself from hitting the ground. She's never going to hit rock bottom. She's never going to reach that moment where she's run out of money or she's run out of enablers and she has to get her life straight. And so the toxic cycle will continue. And you don't learn from your mistakes. You've learned absolutely nothing. All you did was pack up a few of your clothes, get on a plane and go to a different country and expect a new result. You're still within the force. You yeah, know, and that's the definition of insanity. Doing the same things over and over and over again, expecting different results. That's the definition of insanity. How can something change if nothing changes? You don't change the program. You can hear the same music. Four walls. You have gotten unhealthier by the minute. Yep. Shoveling food into your face. You keep repeating the same habits over and over and over again. Hoping that something else will, will happen. I mean... You've learned nothing. And the fact that you just said, I'm my own best friend, you are. Because you're your own yes man. It's been constant yes after yes after yes. You've never been told no. And that's, that's not really a best friend. That's an enemy. That's a friend of me. <laughs> I wouldn't consider that a best friend. I would consider that a friend of me. You think they're being your, they're, your, they are your friend, but they're not. They're working against you. That is the problem in your life. No one has told you no. Right. And the first person that told you no was not her. Mm -hmm. And look where we are because of that. You can't be told no. And that's a lesson you're going to have to learn. Restriction. Okay. Being told no. No, you can't have this. No, you can't eat that. No, you can't go there. No one in your life has told you no until Nodder. You've been surrounded by yes men. Mm -hmm. Pete's, your parents, Salah, right. they're all yes men. We fast forward to today where you say you're going to come back to Canada to save your life. We're not going to get into the who's paying the bill, who's fitting the bill. We're not getting none of that. But what we will get into is how are you going to save your life? You've never been able to do it before. You hate therapy. You hate diets. You hate restriction. You hate all those things. What are you going to do, Chantal? Yeah, she looks at the word no as if you tell her she can't have something, she thinks that if she restricts herself from that, that she's missing out on something. But Chantal, if you give up the fast food, what exactly are you missing out on? If you say no to fast food, what are you missing out on? It's not healthy food. It's processed junk. It's chemicals. What exactly are you missing? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. I think there might be a fear that the people that she has left on her channel that are there to watch her gorge, that if she tries to get healthy, that they will leave. But if that is the case, Chantal, there's a lot more people on your channel that they are there for you. And they have told you that they will be there no matter what you do. As a matter of fact, they support you being healthy. That small percentage of your audience that they are there to watch you gorge. Well, they're not good for you anyway. But you're going to give in to them. Because they are yes men. Because they are enablers. Because while your brain is in the headspace of, I want to continue my issue with food, their headspace is, we're okay with that because you're satisfying our fetish. We're not going to speak out against it. We're not going to oppose it. We're going to agree with you. You know, they say that if a person is an addict, if they're cool with you, it's because you're not speaking out against what that addict is doing. But if you're fighting with the addict, it's because you're probably doing something to save their life. Something I've said before in one of my reacts, and this was apart from a movie called Dr. Sleep. I'll never ever forget this. Now that I've heard it once, I'll never forget it. Addiction goes like this. The part in the movie says, uh, the man takes a drink 
the drink takes a drink and then the drink takes a man now switch out man for woman and a drink for food and that will be chantal chantal eats food the food eats food and then the food eats chantal and that's what we got going on here someone who's addiction and obsession has gotten completely on top of them and now that she's back in canada there is a high probability that all the other addictions are going to come back as well the party favors the coca-cola who knows what else and when she went to kuwait she had tolerances very high tolerances for different things she pushed those tolerances up very very high she's coming back from kuwait with no tolerance to those things or very, very low tolerances. And the scary part is knowing that because Chantal does go overboard, if she does a lot like she used to do, and the fact that she's in very poor health, that could lead to the morgue or the hospital. You're just gonna, just gonna keep doing the same thing or are you gonna actually do it? Are you actually gonna let a doctor look at you and say, no, you can't eat that? Are you going to talk to a therapist and have that person say, no, I don't think you should do that. <laughs> you know, see, she looks at doctors and therapists when they say, this is what you need to do to fix yourself. These are the steps that you need to take. They're giving her advice. They're trying to put her on the right path. She looks at people like that as if they were stupid. And she thinks she knows everything. Well, if you know everything, Chantal, why are you so unhealthy? People that know what they're doing, telling you what you need to do. And you look at that as them trying to be the boss of you and stop you from doing things you like to do, but the things that you like to do are not good for you and aren't doing you any favors at all. You said you made a joke the other day that your defiance, you're going to defy all the haters. You know, about that, about that. You know what, Chantal? You want to defy the haters. You really want to flip us the middle finger. You really want to show us the right way to do it is to take care of yourself. Get yourself together. Go to inpatient, go to therapy, get yourself together. That is the right way to flip the middle finger. Doing things that hurt your health. You're not hurting anybody but yourself. And things are at a critical point. So this is all on you. The only thing you're defying right now is time. Because I have no idea how you've gotten this far with as shitty as you've treated yourself. All right, guys, that's it. I'm looking for some other content. I know it's out there. Just got to find it. Anyway, have a good one, y'all. And uh, it's like going to be so much hard work. Stay mad. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of hard work. But the big question is, is she going to do it? I don't think she will. I've been reacting to her for years. Do I think she's going to put the hard work in? No. Do I think she's going to try? No. I don't think she's that invested in her life or her health. It's not me just being hateful. That's just me being truthful. And it's my channel, so I can say what I want here. <laughs> so she's back in Canada, I believe. Uh, we're going to know the next time she goes live where she's at. But... Uh, your life or your death is up to you, Chantal. You know, make your choice. So hope you guys enjoyed this react. I'm going to leave a link for all the videos that I reacted to in the description. Please check out the different channels. Uh, Queen of WTF, that's Lindsay with an A, and uh, Dean Goldberry. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.